Hi, I'm Deborah with Amoretti. Today we're at Three Notch Brewing in Charlottesville, Virginia. We're gonna go inside and meet Dave, the brewmaster. He's gonna give show us around and we're gonna see what they're brewing. Deborah, how are you? Good, Dave. Good how to are see you. you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Let's go, uh, let's go have a beer. Let's do it. So what are we brewing today? Today we are brewing our Blackberry Goza with Blackberry Artisan from Amaretti. Awesome. Can you kind of walk us through the process? Sure. Uh, so the, the foundation for the Amaretti Blackberry is going to be, of course, barley. So the first thing we're going to do is mill in the barley. Um, and then what we're going to do is send it into the mash tun and add it to hot water. And so we're gonna extract the sugars from the barley and make a very, very sweet liquid we call wort. And then we're gonna take that wort and send it into the kettle where we're gonna add lactobacillus. And the lactobacillus is essentially gonna eat the sugars from the barley and create lactic acid, which is gonna give the goes of this really nice sour profile that really complements uh, the fruit uh, really well. Um, so here we're going to add the artisan blackberry and we are going to pump it into the fermenter. And one thing that I love about this product is that it is really soluble in liquid. It's not heavy and thick and sinks to the bottom. It still provides such a bright fruit profile and a big rich fruit profile, but the beer is still kind of, you know, crisp and refreshing at the same time without being too thick with fruit. Um, so we're gonna add it into the fermenter and we're gonna circulate it for just an hour or so. And uh, that's all it takes to, uh, for the fruit to get nice and uh, mixed into the beer. Do you just pour it into the fermenter or do you pump it in line? Uh, we pump it into the fermenter just to keep a closed uh, system. Uh, we send it into a little tank and then from there we pump it into the fermenter and then recirculate it. Okay, so what inspired you to use this specific flavor? I got introduced to Amaretti at the Craft Brewers Conference many years ago and fell in love with the flavor ever since. I got a free sample, brought it back, played with it a little bit and absolutely wanted to design a beer around it. And then uh, you were really awesome about sending out more samples for me to try. I got your watermelon sample and uh, it's like, this is going to be our next beer. Um, so right from the beginning, I love the product. Um, as, a, as, as opposed to a lot of other competitors, there's no chemical flavor at all. Um, it is, it's so fruity and so pure tasting, so natural tasting that it really, really makes the beer. Um, is, it's the heart and soul of our beer for sure. It's amazing. So what type of feedback do you get from your customers about the Goza? I love this beer so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the, the greatest feedback is the sales that it, that it shows, how many people buy it off the shelves, how many grocery stores wanna, wanna stock it. Um, our watermelon uh, Goza is probably our number one selling beer in the year. Um, it's definitely our most popular beer in the summer. Um, people love how refreshing it is, even though it's it's so fruity, it has so much fruit flavor to it. It's still crisp and refreshing and a perfect summer beer. Um, the Blackberry Goza is a perfect winter beer. It's um, even though it's crisp and refreshing, it still has that kind of winter warm feel to it. Um, passion fruit is the perfect um, bright springtime. You know, the sun's coming out and passion fruit is so um, refreshing as well and such a, a fun and unique flavor. And then in the fall, um, our blood orange and our pomegranate gozas do really, really well because um, they just kind of capture the fall and, you know, the colder months coming ahead. And um, so um, we get so many compliments on the goza and it really comes down to the amaretti that's in it because that really is the heart and soul of the beer. And the watermelon has such an amazing aroma, especially, and such a great, clean, tasty flavor to it, complemented by the uh, by the sourness. But but yeah, everybody uh, loves all four. They th and there's definitely people that get so excited for each. They love the blackberry, but like, when's passion fruit coming out? And then we get the passion fruit out, and they love it. Like, when's watermelon coming out? So we now have been brewing the series of Goza 
for so long now that people are so excited and anticipating the release of the, of the new season. So which Amaretti flavor is your favorite? I'm gonna guess watermelon. I'm gonna, <laughs> yes. I think my favorite Amaretti flavor has gotta be watermelon because that is what started this whole train running of the whole year round series. Watermelon was definitely Virginia's first um, uh, inter introduction to our Goza series and it immediately skyrocketed and took off really, really well. And it was because of the watermelon that we knew we had something special with your product. We had we had a special product of our own, thanks to thanks to Amaretti, that we wanted to do it year round. And that's when we did the pomegranate in the fall, and then the passion fruit in the spring, uh, blackberry in the winter, passion fruit in the spring. But I guess I'd have to say watermelon because I love summer is my favorite season. Watermelon goes as one of my favorite things to drink in my favorite season. Um, and that's where it all began. That was, uh, that was really the beginning of Amaretti for us. Hey Scott, can you tell me about yourself, what you do for Three Notch? Sure, uh, my name is Scott Roth. I am one of the founders and the acting president for Three Notch Brewing Company. Um, so I see that we're in this beautiful restaurant. Has the restaurant been open the entire time the brewery has? Was it a second, like an afterthought? Yeah, well, it certainly wasn't an afterthought. We um, we actually started about a mile down the road in what was the original Monticello Dairy Building, and that facility wasn't set up for a restaurant. We started with a, kind of a separated facility. We had the brewery in the back and a small tasting room up front. And as Three Notch started to grow, we did open locations in Harrisonburg. We opened a tasting room in Richmond, neither of which had any food. But as we were looking at some of the best breweries throughout the country, think of Stone, Bells, um, Founders, those guys, they really planted a flag in each of their communities by creating a space that welcomed everybody. And tasting rooms just don't do that because they're only attractive to beer drinkers and certainly not kids or people who like wine or cocktails or just food and don't wanna drink at all. So looking for a location throughout Charlottesville that we could offer that became important to us. And we were fortunate enough to find this space at the Exard Park in downtown Charlottesville. And we opened this facility in 2017. The original brewery opened in 2013. Um, so about four years into the game, I'll call it. And uh, and I had made mention earlier before we got on camera, but I was in the restaurant industry before and I was excited to get out of it and was begrudgingly drugged back into it when we opened this facility. But I'm very glad we've done it. We've got an awesome staff and we now have three of three of them. We've got a restaurant in Roanoke and, and brew pub in Virginia Beach as well. So the other locations are tap rooms? So Richmond and Harrisonburg are called collab houses. We do a lot of collaboration with the local community. Our brewers uh, are tasked by Dave to find collaborative efforts throughout the community, whether that's nonprofits, home brewers, other restaurants, and we like to bring their stories to life through beer. And we do that at all of our locations, but specifically Harrisonburg and Richmond are more focused on that because they don't have food. So they're, they're breweries, you know, first and foremost, and tasting rooms. Uh, but Charlottesville, Richmond, or Roanoke, excuse me, and Virginia Beach are all, are all brew pubs with full service bars and, and menus. That's a super cool philosophy. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this beautiful art park that's outside of this restaurant? Yeah, sure. The, the owners of the X Art Park uh, took this, this space over, I think it's been two or three decades at this point, and have slowly kind of revitalized it into a safe space for people to come and just enjoy art and be outside. And, you know, we've had the opportunity to throw some really fun festivals here. We partnered with the Festi, which is a large music venue and, and group uh, for an event in the park. We also hosted the Virginia Craft Brewers Fest here twice, which was, was very fun to be the host of that. Um, but, you know, any opportunity that you get to have a large outdoor safe space coupled with beer, food and wine is always kind of a good experience for everybody. Yeah. Do you guys get any say on what goes on out there? Not really. I mean, unless we're, you know, renting the space from them to, to put on a festival, we don't. But they do a good job every weekend. They have a farmer's market here, which is, is a lot of fun and, and brings all different types of clientele uh, to the park and, you know, just raises awareness of the area. Just, just like any other small city, you can kind of get pocketed in the spaces that you typically go out. And it's neat when you bring somebody across town or maybe from Crozet, which is only 15 minutes down the road. But there's a lot of people I meet that still have never been here, even though we've been around for four years. Um, I noticed from your menu, you have quite a few like amazing food dishes that would really pair well with your beer. Is there any specific process behind that? Like, is that something that you do? Is it your chef's decision? Is it your brewmaster's decision? I can tell you with 100% certainty that all of the talent in this organization doesn't come from me at all. <laughs> uh, we hire it. Um, 
from Dave, our brewmaster, to uh, Chef Patrick Carroll, we hired out of the Clyde's Group in Northern Virginia, and he was our original executive chef here. He's now the director of cuisine, so he oversees the three executive chefs at all of our locations. It's really up to them. Um, they have some guardrails around you know, food costs and labor, but other than that, the creativity of the menu is theirs to have. We do try to keep it from changing too frequently because what we found early on when we changed it every month is that people would come back and they'd be disappointed because the dish that they had last time that they really enjoyed was no longer there. So we have some core menu items, but we do change it every couple of months with seasonality, similar to what we do with the Amoretti Goza series, right? Every three months or so, it gets a new flavor that's updated based on the season of the year. So what do you have new in the works? So we are always looking to uh, I'll say plant a flag, but really move into new neighborhoods and bring the three notched brick and mortar experience to different communities throughout the state. Like I said, we have five. We're looking in Northern Virginia right now. We're always got an eye on DC, potentially, you know, over the state lines in either Maryland or North Carolina is not off the table for us in the next couple of years. That's important to us because that's how I feel like we've developed brand adoption when people get the opportunity to come into your walls, meet your people, understand the brand and experience it, then they're a lot more apt to pick it up off the shelf. There is a bazillion options on every grocery shelf now, from Food Lion to Whole Foods, it doesn't matter where you go, the, the options are almost endless. So that's an important part of what we do at Three Notch and find a way to leave our mark, tell our story, touch as many community as communities as we can and consumers as we can. So we'll be continuing to look for new locations. Um, throughout the next couple of years. And then as part of that, brand extensions are important. I think Dave may have touched upon it as well, but the non-alcoholic brand space is, is pretty cool and it's a lot of fun. And we've got a great brewer back there that's pumping out some NA stuff that you would have no idea has no alcohol in it, which is, is pretty unique for the space, especially locally. And we're looking at other things like seltzers, RTDs, potentially the distillery space. So those are all things that we're gonna try to bring to life over the next couple of years. Um, and that'll be a primary focus for us in 2022 and 2023. Dave seemed really excited about the watermelon beer. What did you think about it when you first tried it? Oh man, watermelon Goza. Uh, I am admittedly not a huge Goza fan, but I like ours. And I actually really like the NA one that we're working on right now too. But that said, the watermelon Goza lit it on fire the first time we released it. And the Goza series for us, I think is the only year round flavored seasonal Goza series in the state of Virginia that's brewed by a, a local Virginia brewery. And it is our number two skew. So in a world that's dominated by hazy IPAs and IPAs to have a Goza, which is pretty much, an un, most people don't even know how to pronounce it, right? right? Uh, it's kind of an unknown um, style of beer, but to have that soar up through grocery channels and show up on IRI as the number two skew for a company like Three Notch, which is one of the top three in the state, is, is a big deal. And that's, you know, kudos to Amaretti and the flavorings that we we're able to, to introduce into that beer in a very symbiotic way. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it kind of came on the market a little bit as a hipster kind of a beer. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a good blend between the super sour, funky, either love it or hate it beer and a light, crisp, refreshing, you know, almost just slightly tart. Right. Type ale. It right? definitely took me, I, I had to have the right Goza to realize the, the appreciation for it. They've mixed four of them. Right? Yeah. So tell us, how do we find you? Right. So the easiest way to find us is on the web at threenotchedbrewing.com or 3nb.com, or you can find us on social media at Three Notch Beer. You can Google Dave Warwick and find his email personally, uh, or you can search for our hashtag, which is hashtag leave your mark.